We stand strong. God's a nation, welcome. Welcome to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. In case you didn't know, three days ago, Vibes Cartel gave his first interview in four years amidst life sentence with Billboard magazine. Now, this was published, and of course, I could tell my audience, yo, go look up um, Vibes Cartel new interview with Billboard and read it. But how many people are really going to go look? So not only are we going to read the article, but we're also going to discuss the content of the article. All right, roll up a spliff, get you a drink, hold a seat, come in. All right, so it started out like this. Vibes Cartel poses for a photo backstage during MTV's Temple Network launch celebration. This was in October 16th of 2005 in St. Mary, Jamaica. That was the picture and the caption used to head the article. Right into the article. A mock news clip announcing residents of an undisclosed ghetto community in Jamaica are fuming about treatment meted out by security forces. This opens up the commentary World Boss from embattled dancehall artist Vibes Cartel's new album of Dons and Divas. By this time, y'all should know that the album is out of Dons and Divas, and they are talking about the chant, World Boss, World Boss, World Boss, that is on the song World Boss on the album. We are tired of this. We now stop block the road until the Prime Minister come. We want justice, thunders the dance hall artist Lisa Mercedes, who's featured alongside Red Boom. Their voices joining a chorus repeatedly chanting, World Boss, World Boss, World Boss, World Boss, World Boss, World Boss. The ferocious verses by Vibes Cartel, aka World Boss. This is the song, World Boss, they are talking about now on Billboard. The ferocious verses by Vibes Cartel, aka World Boss, slams political party alliances pitting poor people against each other and demanding accountability from politicians while ridiculing their empty promises. With a dash of humor, government of a dumb plan, commissioner eating dumpling, how them a target bad man, what about good man, where the job, where the program, Baga speech, baga slogan. What you talking about, Gary Coleman? If you don't know, there was a TV show in the 90s where Gary Coleman was in the show and he used to say every time his brother was talking mess, he used to say, what you talking about, Willis? So he must say, what you talking about, Gary Coleman? Might have went over a lot of people's head. The injustices expressed by Vibes Cartel throughout World Boss align with his legal team's opinion on his 2013-2014 trial. His murder conviction for the killing of associate Clive Lizard Williams and the April 3rd denial of an appeal to overturn that decision handed down almost two years after the July 2018 appeal hearing. Three days after the release of Dons and Divas on June 29th, Cartel's lawyers will return to Jamaica's Court of Appeal and make a motion to have his case heard by the UK's Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. So right here we have a up-to-date on the people who are always contacting us and saying, So Flo, I'll go on for Vibes Cartel case. Where are they at now in the case? Any new information? This is for you people. This is the new information. Three days after the release of Duns and Divas. So Duns and Divas was just released, right? And three days after the release, which will take us to June 29th, which is tomorrow, Carter's lawyers will return to Jamaica's Court of Appeals and make a motion to have their case heard by the UK's Judicial Committee of the Privy Council the final appellate court of Jamaica. An important question will be put to the Privy Council is whether or not Cartel received a fair trial. 
whether or not cartel received a fair trial. Now, for those of us who have followed the trial, we know that there were a lot of things. It got to the point in this trial where it was fair to say that the entire trial, the entire case needed to be thrown out. And it got to the point where people were saying, at this point, it's not even if he is guilty anymore. It's the fact that so many things went wrong on the part of the prosecutor, on the part of the invest investigating officers, tampered evidence, so on and so forth, that at this point, it would warrant a, either a whole new trial or it will warrant just throwing this out, right? So his lawyer, who is going to rep represent him to the Privy Council, is saying that that is one of the main questions that will be posed to the Privy Council or one of the main issues. The important question we will put to the Privy Council is whether or not Cartel received a fair trial. The judge was duty-bound to ensure that his constitutional rights were protected, and that was not the case. There was also a case in Vibes Cartel's case where if you are charged as a person, then you have the right also to look over all the evidence, physically look over all the evidence that they are going to be using to convict you or to try to get a conviction against you for what it is you have been accused of. In his case, I believe that that was also one of the things that were breached. So, this is Isat Buchanan, the lead attorney in Cartel's appeal. And of course, recently Cartel just switched lawyers. So people were saying, so Flo, do a story upon that. Explain. How come Cartel does fire Nita Robertson and fire all his other attorneys so, and pick up this new attorney? This is for you. What it is, is he didn't fire anybody and pick up anybody new. What ended up happening here is that when it's time to go to the Privy Council, because the Privy Council is located in the UK, then one must be trained in UK laws. So the lawyers he had before are Tapanaris Jamaican lawyers, but they are, they don't have the qualifications to practice in the UK at the moment under these circumstances. So the one qualified to do so was Isat or Isat Buchanan, which we will do a whole story on him because him himself has a story. So regardless of the outcome of the Court of Appeals, we are still going before the Privy Council because the rules allow it. We should be there by the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021. Again, more information for the people who always want to know an update on the case where it's at. Here we are. He says that regardless of the outcome at the Court of Appeals. So broken down for you like this. His attorneys after the appeal, we all know that recently his appeal was denied, right? And upheld his sentence upheld in that case it is then up to his attorneys to go before those same <laughs> to go before the same people in jamaica to apply for leave say basically saying to them like hey we're we are ready to take this to the privy council because we do not agree with your decision they can say yay or nay. So a lot of people are saying, well, why would you even want to have to go to them if they made a decision that you are guilty and you need to stay where you're at, then I'm sure they're not going to grant you the right to go see Privy Council. Well, his lawyer is letting us know that regardless of the outcome at the Court of Appeal, we are going before the Privy Council because the rules allow it. We should be there by, and here is your timeline, we should be there by 2020 or the beginning of 2021. Someone just asked yesterday on the channel, can somebody explain when Vibes Cartel course with court case will actually reach the Privy Council? And here is the information. 
Isaac Buchanan, his attorney who is representing him at the Privy Council, says that we shall be there by the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021. So, commenting from the St. Catherine Adult Correctional Facility in Spanish Town, where he is serving his life sentence and is eligible for parole in 2046, Vibes Cartel born Adija Azim Palmer, who is now 44 years old, in his first interview in nearly four years, condemned the Jamaican court system and welcomed the chance to have his appeal presented to the Privy Council. Here is what he said. I would like to say, RE, the Privy Council, that I am going to be out soon. Law and st statute are what the council deals in, not corruption. The appeal hearing in Jamaica, just like the trial, was a joke, a kangaroo court, a circus. Well, what he is saying here basically, and this is in the article from Billboard, these are quote-unquote Vibes Cartel words as they were printed in there, and he says that he would like to say that after going to the Privy Council that he will be out soon. Law and statute are what the council deals in, not corruption. In other words, in Jamaica, they deal in corruption. But in the UK, the Privy Council, he is saying, does not deal in corruption. They deal with law and statute. The appeal hearing in Jamaica, just like the trial, was a joke. A kangaroo court and a circus. All right, so his confidence is pretty high that he will be exonerated after seeing the Privy Council which the time frame is the end of 2020 to the beginning of 2021. Well, not everyone feels the same way, however. Following the appeal denial, a release from Mr. Williams, Clive Lizard Williams, a, re a release from his family stated, we are pleased with the outcome of the verdict from the court. And in my opinion, rightfully so. If I am convinced within myself, that you are responsible for my son's death. Then by right, if, the, if your appeal is denied and you are made to remain in prison to uphold that sentence you were given, then I would be pleased too, right? Billboard's interview with Vibes Cartel was coordinated. Now they're letting you know exactly how, because people are going to say, so how in the world did Billboard get an interview with Vibes Cartel? They give you that information as well. Billboard's interview with Vibes Cartel was coordinated by Zoe Espitia, co-founder of Aaron Malfect of Zojack Worldwide. And in the Zojack Worldwide is a big distributor of Dons and Divas and a lot of other records um, within the dancehall, reggae, and other genres of music. And it is the world's largest digital distributor of Jamaican music. The interview questions were emailed to Espitia, who sent them to Cartel. Cartel's response were sent to Espitia, who emailed them back to Billboard. Of Duns and Divas, which dropped June 26th, where today I am reading this to you is the 28th. So his album, his new album, which I'm, is fire, by the way, and I will do a complete review on just the album alone. But Off Duns and Divas, which dropped on June 26th, was produced by Vibes Cartel Music and Short Boss Music. The labels owned respectively, watch this, by Vibes Cartel and his common law wife, Tanisha Shorty Johnson. All right. So a lot of people want to know, well, how come he's able to make uh, money enough to take care of his children and you know what I'm saying? At the same time, pay his legal fees to fight for his freedom for so long, even to the point of going to the Privy Council. Well, in music, you have to have your paperwork right in order to eat right off of your music. And a lot of artists don't know that. They just want to be artists. They want the fame and they want to be able to stand on stage and sing the songs that they write and record in the studios. Right. With Vibes Cartel, he mastered the business side of the music so this new album and it's not the first majority of his music is released and he retains all rights to those music pretty much right so 
This one was produced by Vibes Cartel Music and Short Boss Music and the labels are owned respectively by Cartel and his common law wife Tanisha Shorty Johnson. Now, being in prison for the last nine years definitely took a toll on my family, he said. My parents and especially my kids early on. It caused me and my woman Shorty relationship to be destroyed as far as intimate love is concerned. But we're very cool and have never been in a better place. All the speculations, Shorty has moved on. They don't, they're not together anymore. They just do business together. They have a hostile relationship. All these other things that are out in the public air. He just cleared that space by saying that they could never be in a better place. Cartel commented, Two of Cartel's Shorty, two of Cartel's and Shorty's three children, Jahim, which is Little Vibes, 17 years old, and Akil, which is Little Addy, who is 15, are pursuing music careers and make appearances on Dons and Divas. I definitely think, he actually said, I defo think they'll do extremely well in the game. That is the game of dancehall. Or, they can't say, Adi Amidadi <laughs> offers Cartel, who has seven children, noting they're all happy. So I consider myself a real G that handles his business. Now, for those of you who follow the music, you know about UTG. And um, I've been following them since they were PG-13, when they were kids and started their kids group. And now they have grown, right? And now they have UTG and they have a group as well as they are individual artists. So they can do an album together and then they can do singles, I mean, an album separately, each person. And they can also go off and do their own different ventures. People are saying, why is he putting his children in dance hall? Why never make them turn lawyer and doctor? Those are some of the most ignorant comments I've ever seen or heard. You can't make your picnic become nothing. Your children have to want something, and then you fuel their want for that something, their passion for that something. And if they're cut out to be that, they'll be that, right? Now, moving right along. He was incarcerated in September 29th of 2011 following his arrest at a Kingston hotel after possession of marijuana. Cartel was charged. And the first time Cartel was locked up, it was for possession of marijuana. They were saying they found a whole lot of ganja and Cartel is connected to it. He didn't know he was going in for murder charges. And that is the reason why the other day when they held on to Dexter Dops, you had a lot of people that were saying, yo, the same thing them do to Cartel, you know, because them carry the man going there, say a weed. And next thing we know, two murder charges, right? And he was able to beat one and then they got him on the other one. Under the guise of you are being arrested for marijuana charges, Cartel was charged within days with the July 2011 killing of promoter Barrington Bossy Burton. He was acquitted in that case. Cartel was implicated in the so after he after he beat that one, Cartel was implicated in the August 2011 murder of Lizard, whose body has never been found. May I add? No DNA evidence, nothing, not a trace of lizard has ever been found. And there has, there's no DNA evidence or a trace of anything linking Vibes Cartel to his disappearance. Following a 65-day trial, Cartel was handed a life sentence. Now, with TV, newspapers, radio talk shows, and social media debating each gritty detail, Cartel says that, he cannot get a fair trial in Jamaica, and I agree. Since I got arrested, he said, over in people, I want you to listen to this part. Since I got arrested, over 11,000 people have been murdered in Jamaica. Let that sink in. This is Vibes Cartel speaking, right? And he said, since I got arrested, over 11,000 people have been murdered in Jamaica. Wow. The general public couldn't care less because Vibes Cartel or some other star's name isn't mentioned. Cartel stated, everyone is concerned with where Lizard is. Kids have been murdered, but whatever, they're just kids. 
elderly have been murdered, but that's nothing. They were going to die anyway. We want justice for lizard is their cry. Effing idiots. Over 11,000 people and no national outcry. I don't even blame government as much anymore because as the Jamaican saying goes, if patient don't care, what doctor must do? So, there is no fair trial. In other words then, Bob's Cartel is one who, if a pin drop in Jamaica, he is blamed for that pin hitting the floor too loud. Anything happens, if the breeze blow the wrong way, it must be Vibes Cartel. Anything that happens, he's been blamed for everything that is bad outside of Jamaica. He's been scapegoated for years, right? I remember even a prominent person saying, if we did not put him in prison, then Jamaica would have no school system today. Which implied to me that they were more concerned about his influence over the youths than they were actually about if he was guilty of anything or not. I think this was a church and state trial versus Vibes Cartel trial. Not really a uh, let's find him guilty because we believe he really did kill Lizard trial. Now, he says that he don't even blame the government as much anymore because the people really don't care about the state of affairs in the country. Because since he got arrested, over 11,000 people have been murdered in Jamaica. God of mercy. The general public couldn't care less because when the murders happen, no one is saying a big name celebrity is involved with that murder. So no one cares. Oh, uh, a regular thing, man. People get that shit all the time. Next, that kind of thing. When asked how he has endured nine years behind bars, he offered, I'm a very stubborn person. That's where I get my strength from. If you're going to say cartel being in prison will end his career, I'm going to do everything to show you that you're an idiot. And guess what? He has it under his belt now where he can actually say, they put me in prison. They thought that was going to be the end of my career. And I got way bigger than even before. And to some extent, Vibes Cartel has actually turned into... Um, a legend now you understand so the, the the attempt if there was an attempt it failed in a recent interview on CVM TV's on stage Bujabantan which was doing his first interview in a long time because he was caught up overseas Bujabantan said that when he went to jail in 2010 Vibes Cartel was Dancehall's most popular artist. And when he was released in December of 2018, a cartel missy around the place same way. How has Cartel maintained his dominance from behind bars? It's a secret like the Colonel's recipe. A true secret to success is commitment, hard work, smart work, self-analysis, and most important, humility, he responded. Once I face a rhythm, I'm not world boss. Just a man with a pen, paper, and a track. Other artists are working hard, so I think it's just the formula. And in other words, what he was saying here is his winning formula is all these things. All the, the hard work, the commitment, the smart work, self-analysis. And most importantly, humility, he responded. And once he faces a rhythm, he doesn't jump on a rhythm, an instrumental, and say, Yo, me a world boss, I'm going to write a song, you know. No, he jumps on the rhythm as just a man with a pen, a paper, and a track. In other words, all the things that he's talking about when he says the government, this and them, that and them, need to clean up the place. 11,000 murders since my incarceration. Think about that. 11,000 murders since my incarceration. These kind of things. So, of Duns and Divas, which is the album, just drop, make sure you go get it, continues Cartel's proven blueprint, juxtaposing the sacred Say a Prayer. That's one of the songs. And the profane Bad Gal. Or combining both Jump on the Beat, which I think is one of the biggest songs off the album, Jump on the Beat and Beat It Like It Out of Order. 
Ade yade dade fede hola dem boya. That song, No Prison, is surprisingly a love song. Militant Coop depicts a sexual takeover, and he'll likely score gold again with the pop dancehall reggaeton flavored cute rider, which is produced by John FX. I must tell you that Vibes Cartel is also going for the Grammy this year, um, and well, when the Grammy is up next, and we are looking to see if he can actually get a Grammy. What a thing if he actually gets a Grammy. That would require a whole nother video for a whole nother discussion. All right. A winning formula never really changes. It's, he said, it just gets wider, more depthy. So it's cartel in his usual vibes. He says, this album has more features than the new S class bands, a new generation of dons and divas. I may have to big him up on that part for sharing this platform with the new generation of Dons and Divas, as he calls it. Exactly how Cartel recorded of Dons and Divas 18 tracks, it remains a mystery, since recording isn't allowed in the prison for him. The world boss' cryptic response didn't provide an explanation. All he said was that many people say, yes, Vibes is recording in prison, but where's the proof? But this is Jamaica, where you don't need proof to imprison someone. For the record, I'm not authorized to answer such above pay grade questions. So I'll say, a tree fell in the forest and no one was there to hear it. <laughs> and he left it at that. Now, despite the headline generating explicitness heard on some of the biggest hits, Cartel's vast catalog contains many songs address addressing inequalities that are faced by poor black Jamaicans. Issues he explores in depth throughout his 2012 book, The Voice of the Jamaican Ghetto, co-authored with Michael Dawson. And I've been telling people for the longest, if you have not read The Voice of the Jamaican Ghetto, then you are missing out Big time. I mean, this, this, this piece of literature will open your eyes so much. Now, yet, even with the current movements calling for societal reforms, don't expect a rush of commentaries in cartels' music. Reggae and dancehall music have always brought awareness to the plight of the poor. But the truth is, how much more awareness do we need, he asked. Music has shed so much light as it can on social injustices. Evil doesn't sleep, so the good messenger cannot rest either. The message must be broadcasted, but I think music is overrated in the amount of change it can bring. We gotta step up and do if we want something tangible. So in other words, closing that interview what he's saying basically is stop put all the responsibility on music you know a lot of people say blame dancehall because of the music mess up the youth and brain and make them a axe and cartel is saying that we've put a whole lot of positive stuff into the music we've put a whole lot of education and awareness stuff into the music and we've done it consistently for years and years i think we have exhausted that point now right We've exhausted that point now. He said music has shed light, uh, as much light as it can already on social injustices. Now, if we really want something, we're going to have to get up and go do. Not just sit there and listen to music and hope some music all everybody sings about upliftment and good. And then we just sit there and don't do anything. You know what I'm saying? And with that said, that was the end of the interview. Now... Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. It's SoFlow TV. I'm out. I was still a sour. Free Vibes Cartel. Mr. Free World Boss.